My name is Mark Connolly. I'm the executive director of the Knickerbocker Music Center. I've been the director for about, well, since 2014 when we actually became a nonprofit. Prior to that, I was the manager. The first time I stepped foot in the Knickerbocker was probably in the late 70s, coming here after a wedding. And to be truthful, I don't remember much about it. My favorite part is definitely the music and being surrounded by great musicians and people that love music. I think that's the reason I got involved and definitely the reason that I stayed here because I thought I was only gonna be here temporarily to try to get the place on solid financial footing and then I just got hooked on what the whole concept and uh, just being at the Nick meant. And to me that was very important and it still is. Uh, that's why, you know, with the help of Chuck Royce as Greg said, we um, have been able to become a nonprofit. Uh, we've been able to now, now to um, partner with the United Theater. Um, when I first got here in 2010, I was surprised. I knew that the Knickerbocker was steep in history, but it didn't seem to me like it was really that well known even by a lot of people in the town. And that was something I thought had to change. And to do that, we really needed to get new blood into the Knickerbocker. Everybody remembered the days of Roomful of Blues, which were great, but they were people's parents now, and we needed the younger people in here. So we expanded the types of music that we brought in, and we're bringing in, and that has really helped us to bring back the community, along with the fact that we became a nonprofit because we wanted to have education as well as performance. And through education, we hope to bring in families, not just patrons that are here to listen to music, but the small patrons that are going to learn music and then eventually become our listeners. I think the Knickerbocker now is seen as a musical community center. I think that we seem to always be voted as the best live music center in the area, including southeastern Connecticut. Um, our stature has grown. We now have two separate rooms. We have the main club and we have the tap room which is a listening bar. Um, we have that live music in there on Sundays and Thursdays. We're in the process of soundproofing those walls so we can actually have two different shows here on weekends. Uh, you know, one show that might appeal to a blues group and another show that's gonna uh, uh, appeal to younger people that wanna hear, you know, a singer songwriter. So we're just basically trying to have something for everyone here as often as possible. When we thought of becoming a nonprofit, my whole thought was that Again, we needed to bring the community back into the Knickerbocker, and to do that, education would certainly help. So I approached uh, the Rhode Island Philharmonic Orchestra School of Music and asked them if they would come down to Westerly, and if we built them a music school, would they run it for us? Uh, they came down, they looked at the whole place over, they were excited about it, as we were, and then the idea was, let's put the music center in the basement of the Nick, which is a very large space, but as it turns out, it wasn't gonna work. There was not any area to expand into, so we tried to find other possible places to have it. And years went by before we actually had the idea of putting in the United Theater, since that was gaining ground as far as opening up, and that all worked out perfectly. So now the school is in the United. Um, the, the school, the, the teaching, a lot of the teaching actually happens at the Knickerbocker during the day when we're not having shows. We have students in here and teachers throughout the week. Um, we are also working with United um, as far as promoting shows and getting different bands coming in here. One of the best things about being partners with United Theater is that we can get a call from an agent saying I have such and such a band. And if they're talking to me and I know this band is gonna have, need a bigger space, then with a 600 cap room at the United, it'll all work out. And they'll get calls over there and they'll say, no, we're too big for that space. Let's bring them into the Knickerbocker. So between the two of us, we really have a great music cultural center uh, that's gonna be there for all kinds of people and all kinds of bands. And we had to bring in younger people and two of those younger people that really helped us get going were Glenn Kenzie and now Glenn Thomas, his professional name, and Will Evans. With their ideas and their spirit, we've really brought a lot of the younger people from Wesley back into the club. We started the tap room. We changed what was the men's bar with five big screen TVs into a little listening bar, kind of a hipster bar with a nice stage. 
So it's a whole new concept that brings in young people. It brings in another stage for younger people to play on. And you really need that younger spirit and that younger drive in any business or entity. And that's what's really helped us kind of take the next step from just being a blues club to a club that shows all kinds of shows and different kinds of music. So what it means to me is kind of written on the wall outside of the venue. You'll see our mural that explains the, the history of the Knickerbocker as told to me by Paul Vetterito. The Knickerbocker was built in 1933 by two brothers. Uh, they wanted to have a place for dining and dancing. They originally had an ice cream shop here. And I think after Prohibition, they had better ideas. So what happened is they named the Knickerbocker after the Knickerbocker Express train that ran between Boston and New York. And the tracks are right across the street from the Knickerbocker. And so the Knickerbocker Express would stop at the Westley Station. And back in the 30s and 40s, a lot of musicians on their way to New York or back to Boston or whatever would stop at Westerly on the train, come up here, play at the Knickerbocker, and then go on to their next destination. So the mural shows the Knickerbocker Express on a keyboard, tracks, and then it shows a musician walking up to the train station. And then we go on to a Marshall amp on the outside, and that kind of shows you the next step of what happened then with Stevie Ray Vaughan a silhouette of Stevie Ray on the, uh, leaning up against the Marshall Amp. So that tells the story of how it all started and how it really became a center for the blues in this whole region. And to be celebrating that still with a band like the Roomful, Roomful of Blues or the Founders or the Knickerbocker All-Stars is just an amazing tribute to the Knickerbocker itself. I'd just like to thank Chuck Royce for all his help and his support and uh, listening to me for the ideas that I have and supporting them and making most of them happen.